Okay, so first of all, this is gonna be more exciting than it looks. I'm letting you know that. Maybe not exciting, but definitely very useful. So, okay, have you heard of OneNote before? If you have already, please sit tight because I'm gonna tell you about the extended version and it's called Classroom Notebooks for Teachers. But if you haven't already heard of OneNote, then you should know, just a side note, that it is literally the best free online notebook platform. It has seriously helped me um, as a scatterbrained student in keeping all my notes, resources, videos, information in one place, and it also syncs across devices, which is great. Anyway, back to Classroom Notebook. This is an extension of OneNote. Uh, it's got a ton of features for teachers, and you're going to want to listen up because I honestly think that it could be your secret to success as a first-year teacher. So it's going to be great for easy lesson planning and delivery, sharing and organizing content and resources for students, delivering and monitoring homework, always fun, uh, allowing for interactive participation and collaboration, and potentially sharing information with colleagues or parents. And the best part is that this is in all one color-coded organized place, people, that syncs across platforms, which is great. So if you're a little bit scatterbrained um, like me, this could be a, a, an amazing tool and help revolutionize the way you teach and organize your class. So to keep things exciting, I'm gonna jump into some of the features of the platform right away and then give you guys a bit of a tour before explaining how to access an account, followed by the pros and cons. So why is the class notebook so great for teachers? Uh, basically, you're gonna see that it's divided into four sections. You're gonna see that there's student notebooks um, where you can view any student, any individual student's work. Uh, these are gonna be kept private from the rest of the class naturally. Uh, the content library, this is where you're gonna be able to share content for the whole class to see, but no student can edit it. So that's great obviously for lectures and uh, other resources. Then there's also a collaboration space, and this is where students can work together or edit materials directly in real time. So if you're sharing maybe like a brainstorming board, you can see it uh, as students edit it. And additionally, featured here is the private teacher notebook in the same place where no student can access, but you can keep all your materials like curriculum guides and lesson plans, notes in advance, etc. So, okay, it is one thing to talk about it, but let's take a look at what the platform is actually like. I've made a little sample for you guys. So here we go. We are currently in the math notebook. If you go over to the left hand column here, you can see it's pretty easy. I can change between different notebooks that I make. So that's how you know what notebook you're in. And then once you are in your notebook, you can see that all the sections in the notebook are on the left hand side. So I'm gonna just walk you through what each one of them means uh, that we just reviewed before, but we're just gonna go through it so you can see. Um, at the bottom here, there you can see four different names. These are gonna be considered the students uh, and you have access to each one of their private notebooks. Again, only you and the individual student can see what's in them. So let's take a look inside of one here, open it up. Great, so you can see there are different categories inside each notebook. These are suggested categories, but a student can make any category they wish in here. So let's try, we'll just take a look. We'll go class notes. Okay, day one. All right, so let's say the student wants to add their own page into here and take some notes. We're gonna call this test page or lage. That's also a fun word, page, right? Okay, so once we're in here, we can basically insert such a variety of media. You can put in pictures from file, from camera, online, this syncs to a Creative Commons, uh, files, um, yeah, PDF, PowerPoints, anything can be linked in really. Uh, audio, which is nice. So if you wanna take audio notes or a student maybe needs to record a lecture in class for typing it up later, that's really useful. Um, what else we got here? There's also a math option. So if a student is in math class, there's all these different math uh, criteria, select your equation, tap the math button, blah, 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 pretty great. Um, additionally, we have draw, which is also pretty cool. You can just kind of do your doodles as you would, which would be nice if students are operating from like an iPad or something. They can just write directly on here instead of having to take typing notes if that's easier for them or draw pictures and add things to maybe files that the teachers uploaded for them. Okay, what else we got? Uh, also some fun things are check accessibility. This is better for teachers. So if you wanna check, you know, um, 
some content that you've made, check accessibility. It will literally check the content here for you and let you know if there's anything missing. Like maybe you've uploaded a video from YouTube that doesn't have any options for transcripts. It's gonna let you know. So that's also pretty neat. Okay, and also there is a dictate option, which is I find pretty great. It is gonna just write down exactly what you're saying while you speak. So audio to, to text translation kind of thing. So we're just gonna move on to the teacher section. Again, this section over here is the area where only a teacher will be able to see what's here. And of course, the teacher can share this with their colleagues or they can share it with a substitute. So as you can see, just to show you guys, we could go add section and call it sub. So now there's a section in there where a teacher might drag and drop some kind of substitute materials. So let's take a look and just see, um, but as you can see, additionally, like they put things like resources and then they categorize them like websites, books, field trips, ideas, just, just things that they can plan. Lesson plans, let's take a look here. Okay, so teacher or me has dropped in a lesson plan for math here. It was made in Google Slides and it was exported as a PDF and it's just uh, featured now here. So this is in the private area for teachers right now, but let's say it's ready to go. What could I do to put that in a spot where students can now see it? It's gonna be shareable. So it's pretty easy. All you're gonna do is right click and you are gonna go to copy. And you go into the content library here. All right, and we'll go week one fractions and go paste. Boom, okay. So what we've just done is take our lesson from the private space there and put it in a, it's just loading still here, here we go. We put it in the content library. So again, the content library is now all the things that are viewable by students. They cannot edit them, anything directly. So you're not gonna get any like little cheeky drawings and stuff on that. This is just purely for them to look at and potentially copy and put into their own private notebook spaces. So what else here? We can take a look as an example. I have showed you what you might want to make available for students. So we have like a week two area here. Here the teacher has put the in-class discussion. So you can see you can scroll down. And there is a way to make this fit the screen better, but it's, it's better on the desktop version. It's a little more, more complicated online, so we're not going to go there right now, but it is possible. Um, helpful handout. There's another section. They've placed that there for them. Optional links. So you can see they can link them to some useful websites and some helpful videos maybe too the program here. So that's the content library, pretty cool. Um, so there are also collaborative options. So let's take a look at this slide here. What do you wonder? What do you notice about the KitKat bar? Blah, 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 blah. Look over here. The students are directed to watch this video and then respond to it. So like we've talked about, you cannot respond in the content library. This is only editable by the teacher. So the, the students would probably go up to the collaboration space. And this space, like we've talked about, is areas where everyone can edit, adjust, and brainstorm together. So I've put a little sample here. As you can see, students, uh, maybe at this point, someone had asked them, what do they think about numbers? Students are responding, blah, blah, blah here. And you can track which student is doing what. So if there's someone is writing some inappropriate, funny business, you will get to the bottom of it. Um, yay. <laughs> Let's talk about the most fun of all, which is homework and quizzes. So use your brain. What do you think you would do for homework and quizzes? Okay, let's see. Let's go teacher only. Okay, this teacher has already, surprise, surprise, designed some homework for this fraction lesson. I put it together here. So right now it's in the teacher only. That means students can't see it. But I want students to be able to see it. So I'm going to go again, copy. And we're going to move that into the content library for fractions. Put it underneath here. Paste. Give it a second. But that doesn't really, I mean, the students can access it there, but we want to kind of send it maybe directly to these students' individual notebooks. And there is definitely a way to do that. It's very exciting, my friends. So let's go up to class notebook. Great. And see this little corner here, which says distribute page. We go distribute page. And you can actually go distribute page like this. And it's just going to load up here. It would be nice if it was quick. Great, so it's showing you all the contents of your individual students, uh, 
I guess, categories here, what's in their notebook. Just to remind you, you can see here. Or that's me, sorry, we'll go. Look, class notes, quizzes, homework, handouts. Okay, we wanna send this obviously to homework. So we'll just go quick, click and check it out. Boom. We can see now that each student has received this homework, which is pretty cool. And if we wanna review, how students are doing on it. Obviously, you can go up to review student work. And let's go homework next. Week one fractions, that's the homework we just assigned. And we can see, we can check in on individual students and see how they're doing. So I hope you got the gist of things. Obviously, there's a lot more opportunities to be creative with this and make it work for you how you want, but this is just a quick overview. So we're just gonna head back and answer the question, how do we actually get OneNote for teachers? So as I was talking about, OneNote is basically the starting place for this. And uh, OneNote is totally free with Hotmail and Outlook. Uh, this automatically syncs across multiple devices, blah, 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 blah. All you need is a Hotmail account for OneNote. So you can access that sort of same setup as a student, but you're not gonna get all those extended features like the categories we just walked through like the different types of you know, collaboration, content, et cetera. But you are gonna be able to use it as a great notebook taking tool. To get classroom notebook, however, you are gonna need a Microsoft 365 account. So the good news is for this is that that is totally free if you are a student or teacher and you have an email account connected to a school. So education isn't about getting lost in papers or losing our papers or not finding our way in directions or materials. With a system like this, everything can be found in one place, and that's great for both you and your students. And it can get you guys back to the learning part of school. So as a student who struggles with a little bit of disorganization related to ADHD, I can tell you that something a system like this is huge. It's not to be undermined for uh, reasons of accessibility. I think it's great. So again, pros, easy to use, free easy to access from different devices, has a built-in accessibility features that check for accessibility concerns, has text to audio and transcript options. It's versatile. You can add tons of different media content, collaborative, interactive experiences. Uh, you can share with other teachers and parents, and it also syncs to Google Classroom. So they're not trying to make a point there. They are all about integrating with each other. That's great. So cons. <laughs> So uh, some people have mentioned, and I have also noticed with my own OneNote that sometimes there are issues syncing across different devices. It always happens, but sometimes it might take a little longer than others and you don't really know when that's gonna happen. Uh, additionally, when you upload images from the Creative Commons, this is just a small thing, but it uses Bing, which you know not as many people are excited about Bing and it's probably for a reason. There's just like less options. Uh, additionally, um, when you're adding students to this program, uh, students must be added to the Teams platform first, which is another thing in Microsoft 365. It's very easy to do, but you can skip that if this is attached to a school registry account where students have already been added. Um, again, could be a con if you need a school-based email for the free version. And this could be an issue, but I think it could be solved, is that certain students uh, might not find it accessible every day at home. So, you know, there's some students that don't have access to the internet, obviously, or, or tech devices at home. So this, this wouldn't work for them, but you can definitely devise additional systems and still use this program with them. So you could print out homework, you could print out the responses, or, or sorry, have tangible copies of the responses, but you can still store it all in this place, which is great. Like you can take a picture of their work and put it into this system, even just for you to keep track of the content of students and uh, obviously share. Uh, more tangible copies with with the child themselves. So yeah, that's I hope that's a convincing overview for you guys. Um, I think you should go check it out. Maybe not right now, but soon, maybe after finals. Log into Microsoft 365 with your Concordia email. You can get it at office.com. And I hope you guys enjoy your time exploring OneNote. Farewell.